Say, what's cracking, YouTube? It's your boy, 16 to life, and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. Yard down. Now, for those of y'all that's new to my page, in 1994, I got arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life, and I served 24 years straight in the California prison system. Normally, I come on my channel, I tell stories about my prison experience or stories about my street exploits before I went to prison. But I definitely don't want anyone to think that I'm condoning or endorsing those type of things. So from time to time, what I like to do is a segment that I call Free Game Friday. And what that is, is I come on here and I give uh, information to people out there that's still in the street, especially the younger homies. In the same way some of my older homies would give me and my homies information when we was out there on the streets in hopes of helping us move smarter and eventually transition out of the street, man. So let's hop right up into this video, man. Now, this video right here today, it seems like this would be a video that I wouldn't even have to make. It seems like, you know, a video like this would, would be common sense. You know, it seems like, you know, uh, it would be a waste of time making a video like this because... For people out there in the streets, you should not have to be told this. But sadly enough, time and time again, as we watch shows like Hood Politics, War in Cali, and things like that, Barrio Tales, we see that dudes do not shut their mouth, man. Uh, one of the first things that I was taught, man, when I jumped into the streets is say nothing to police. I mean, to be honest, I think a lot of us from certain cultures or talk, never talk to the police way before we even hop into the streets, before we even decide if we're going to get into the streets or not. Because honestly, just to keep it real, um, a lot of minorities do not trust the police. But it seems like a lot of people don't know this, or it seems like when they get arrested, they still fail to be quiet. And they want to try to talk their way out of a situation. Um, let me tell you guys something. For those who do not know, the police... It, 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 I believe it was in 1969 or somewhere around there. There is a Supreme Court ruling that the police are allowed to lie. The police do not have to be um, during an investigation. The police do not have to be honest with you. They can lie. They can t say all types of things. And for those who don't believe me, let me just show you this video clip of a lawyer. Hi, I'm Jeff Hampton with the Hampton Law Firm. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel today. I'm gonna to talk exactly about that. Can the police lie to you? Is it legal to do it? Should you expect that they will do so? In fact, the United States Supreme Court has ruled in multiple court settings and in multiple jurisdictions, they have come out and said that lying to a suspect is a valid investigative technique, okay? So in other words, the police can pretty much lie to you as much as they want to. Now let me give you some examples. Here's some of the most common lies the police are likely to tell if you're in an investigation. Maybe an undercover police officer will lie to you about being a police officer. So it always blows me away when people say, no, be honest with me, man, are you a cop, right? Well, the police can lie to you. They're gonna tell you that. So an undercover officer will tell you they're not, right? Number two, police can lie about having incriminating evidence against you, is that they can say, hey, listen, your buddy John already gave me all this, I already know all this, you better tell me now, otherwise it's gonna go really bad for you. They can lie about that. Police can also lie about the severity of your sentence. Here's one. If, you don't be, if you're not honest with me now, the judge could give you life. You better tell me now or things are going to go terrible for you. They can lie about that. The reality of it is they have no control over that at all. So now you've heard from the lawyer's mouth that the police are allowed to lie. So in any situation, especially, man, if you're guilty, you have to shut the hell up. You know, some people think that if they happen to commit a crime and then maybe a week later, the police show up at their door they show up by luck if the police is showing up at your door and you have did a crime it's because they have some evidence at least implicating you in that crime man so it is never in your best interest to try to talk your way out of things and make things worse man let me give you an example right say you do some doulo stuff right say you got a good partner right and y'all hanging out and your partner having big bread and he counting all this money in front of you because he trusts you or whatever and one day you know, you just cannot resist the temptation to go to his house and steal some stuff, steal some money or whatever, while you know he's at the gym or away from the house or whatever, right? Now, let's say when you go to make this move, you know that his neighbor has cameras, so you dress to conceal your identity, right? And so the neighbor catches you on the camera. She shows the camera to your buddy and your buddy say, damn, man, that look like the homie right there. 
So for whatever reason, you know, the eventually the police wind up coming to talk to you. Right. And so, um, of course, if you guilty, man, your best thing is just to shut up. You don't have to prove you were not there. You don't have to prove that you didn't do it. The police have to prove that you did do it. The police may lie to you, right? They'll say, okay, the neighbor saw you. Uh, we got the neighbor seeing you. That's why we're here. The neighbor saw you. She clearly saw your face. And also, we found your fingerprints in the house. Now, they just might be lying to you all out. Maybe they didn't even dust for fingerprints, right? But now suddenly, when they tell you this, on the inside, you begin to panic. And so now you make an excuse. You say, well, yeah, you know what? I did come over there because I, I come over there all the time. I came to visit my homie. And when I got there, it was something outside. He dropped his wallet. It was a package left. Whatever quick lie you come up with, right? So now unknowingly, what you have done is you have placed yourself at the scene of the crime that day. When actually, if you had just kept quiet later on, that could have been something that your lawyer could have easily explained away, right? Now, let's say they did find your fingerprints in the house. But of course, this is your homie, man. This is your buddy. So you're over there all the time. You're over there all the time playing dominoes, drinking, whatever you're in there doing. So your fingerprints are going to be in the house. So if you had to just kept quiet, which is, of course, you're right. Then later on, if they did happen to charge you, anything that they had against you in the way of evidence would have been presented to your lawyer and then you could have explained that situation away right um another thing that dumb people do right when they get locked up people in the street that should know better right you get arrested on a case they'll put you in a cell right it'll be a bug cell and sometimes it may even be a gang member in there who's working with the police or a police who is extremely familiar with gang activities and he is pretending to be a gangster or whatever and it kills me how dudes will sit up there and discuss their whole case in a jail cell this is a jail cell man you don't think that they can put listening devices in the jail cell uh i never forget like i told before man when i got locked up in riverside county and i would go to court you would have a lot of white dudes in there discussing who was selling who was selling a uh, uh, speed where and you know they'd give his exact locations and how much speed this dude was was selling and I used to think all the time, man, if this cell is bugged, those dudes are going to jail, right? Then it's another crazy thing that people do. People will get on the jailhouse phone and call home. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I got that thing, you know, that gun. Yeah, the gun is downstairs in the basement uh, uh, under, under, the, under the clothes by the, by the washing machine, man. Take the gun and give it to Cynthia and have her go take the gun to John. And just crazy stuff that you should not be saying on no jailhouse phone how many times have we seen like i said cases on hood politics or any type of show where a person is on the phone discussing his case that information is being recorded and then later on they will use that information to come back and help win a conviction against you it's just crazy right and it seems like all this stuff should already be um in the minds of individuals who are out there committing crime. Now, let me tell you something else, right, that I had to learn the hard way personally myself. Sometimes, right, when we go to jail, especially if you happen to go to jail for a gang-related crime, but not necessarily, you don't have to, but a lot of times we think that when we go to jail, everybody that's locked up is with the business everybody is going to stick to the cold of the streets and so we think that it is okay to discuss our cases right of course we're a little nervous in there we have anxiety now i have been charged with an attempted murder actually i have been charged with three attempted murders they was also talking about filing another murder because it was alleged that i had killed a witness who was a witness in my attempted murder case right so now there was a crip up in there and i've always refrained from saying his name i just refer to him as s there was a crip up in there who happened to be from a crip gang right from los angeles he was about 35 he had been to the pen a couple of times by this being my first time in any type of serious trouble you know i'm looking to this dude just for his opinion on possibly what could happen i'm talking to him about the evidence that they claim that they have against me, so on and so forth, right? And so his opinion really cannot do anything. It can't help me. Only thing that his opinion could do is potentially soothe my mind. 
But what he happens to tell me has no bearing in what is going to happen to me. The only person that can possibly save you when you get locked up besides yourself is your lawyer. Never discuss your case with anybody that's locked up, man, because sometimes people will share the information in which you gave them in order to try to get their freedom, right? And this is exactly what this dude did. This dude ends up writing a letter to the district attorney in my case uh, because he was facing 28 years with 85%. He was facing his second strike. And so he told them he knew all about uh, my attempted murders. He knew all about my murders, so on and so forth. And he was willing to testify uh, in exchange for leniency in his case. And that's exactly what he did. Um, it also happened once again. I told another good story and you guys probably should go check that out. The name of that story is called He Told Him and He Told the DA about pretty much the same situation, man. A dude is walking, talking with this dude in the county jail. The dude he is talking to is pretty much a lawyer. He's a he's a inmate lawyer who was locked up in prison in Montana for about 10 years. He ended up having his charges reversed. He had studied the law. He was extremely knowledgeable about the law. And so this dude who is talking to him has been locked up for a murder. And so he's um, telling this dude all about his case, right? This dude ends up contacting the district attorney and ended up testifying against him to get his charges dropped, right? So like I said, it seemed like being in the street and not talking to the police when you're arrested should go hand in hand. But of course, it's extremely surprising how many times it happens where when people get locked up, they want to try to remove themselves from the charges. They think they're slick and they think that they can come up with these off the head stories to tell the police, which in reality really make no sense. And only thing you're actually doing is digging yourself a bigger hole, because now when you tell the police a story or a situation, oh, yeah, you know, I was over there at Chills. Now you have locked yourself in not only have you locked yourself in to a certain to a certain story you've also implicated chill now so now now you have given them an alibi now that they want to come to me and if i'm involved i can't say i didn't did nothing else you know what i'm saying so never ever say nothing man if you get locked up just be quiet man and potentially things will be better for you down the line anyway you already know who it is it's your boy 16 to life Resume normal program. I ain't never told y'all, but I ain't never testify. Thugged it on the main line. I never went to S and Y.